This podcast is brought to you by Bernie's Tap and Grill. It's family owned and operated since 1954. Located across from Wrigley Field on Clark and Waveland. My dad hit a few home runs on the Waveland Avenue. And Bernie's was my dad's favorite place to go. It's got delicious food, four full-service bars, an awesome beer garden, a sidewalk patio cafe, and a cool upstairs area. It's the place I've always met my friends at before and after games. Go on by and tell Linda Dillman, Jeff Santo sent you. Bernie's Tap and Grill, where you go when you go to Wrigley. Sit back and relax. It's time for Peanuts, Popcorn, and Cracker Jacks. Hey, how's it going? I'm your host, Jeff Santo. I'm here with my wife, Christy. Hello, hello. We're broadcasting from Burbank, California. Speaking of California, do you consider yourself a California boy now? Ooh. Um, I guess, in, I guess, yeah, in a way, um, you know... Chicago's my home, though, you know, as far as like where I'm from. But I would say that my adult life has been on the West Coast, Arizona and California. More and now, so than not, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I met you, though, in Arizona. That's true. So three places, uh, Chicago, Arizona, then California. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I would say, yeah, I've been out here in L.A. for a long time. Um, had a sp- time where I went back to Arizona. But um you know, it's weird because Chicago, going back to Chicago, you've gone back there with me. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love Chicago. A bunch of times. Um, and Chicago to me, though, sometimes is like going back into the past when I go there. Mm. And especially now, you know, since my dad passed away, it really is going to the past. Um, and it's, it's such a cool city, though. Oh, it is. Let it, me ask you something. If you were born in California, do you think you'd be a surfer boy? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I love the sun. What about what about the, <laughs> what about Jaws? Well, I, it's different. I grew up in in Chicago, so Jaws was bigger to us, right? Because <laughs> we swim in lakes. I got scared to jump into my our lake. We lived on a small little lake you, after you Jaws. Thought sharks were in your lake? <laughs> no, there were fish in the lake, but it's just <laughs> Jaws gave you that that mythical like, oh my God, something might come up from the dark beyond and get you. So even a lake at night, I just remember. I mean. After seeing Jaws, we were all like, oh, my God, the lake seems freaky. Because you start putting yourself in that situation in the movie, right? Yeah, that, and you can't see the bottom. No, you can't. You, you know, can't. Uh, I grew up um, in the Northern California, and we used to go uh, skiing in the Delta. Ooh. You know, and it's murky, and you can't see the bottom. Yeah, that's that's a little freaky. Because yeah. if it's not a shark, it might be something slimy. And the Delta does connect to the ocean. <laughs> right? You never know. So, see, yeah. Out here, it's weird because if I grew up out here and I and I got friendly with the ocean right away because mm-hmm. uh, I love the sun, yeah, I'd be a surfer. Plus, I had bad skin, so I would all the salt water is good for the skin. That would be wonderful, right? So, yeah, I, I think about like, yeah, that definitely would have been in the in the ocean. Now, you don't like cold weather though. Going to Chicago, but I love the summers in Chicago. Well, yeah, who doesn't? <laughs> I mean, that's easy to say. You got to go year round if you're going to say you're from a place. So, I can visit the snow any day. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think you could last in a winter no. in Chicago. No. Just knowing that, you know, how the temperature in the car has to be a certain degree. Yeah, no. So as far as that, I'm not a California, what'd you say, boy? Well, Jeez. it's a saying. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> California man. I do think, though, um, I like... Being here, I like that it's good weather. (laughs) I like that, you know, again, um, everything happened in my childhood in Chicago. So like I say, when I walk in, it feels like it feels a bit like coming back to a museum a little bit Um, and things have changed. So you get a little freaked out by that, too. Your your hometown is a beautiful hometown. Oh, we love San Francisco. Redwood City. Um, Oh, yes. And remind me a little bit of like Glenview in a in a way it's but you you got the hills and the mountains it's very middle class kind of upper class but you know at times it's got its mixtures it's got its mix yeah, and and so did we you know we Redwood had a mix city is climate's best by government's test is the city motto and it's just a it, it really is kind of like a Pleasantville yeah it's yeah. it's cool and and just you know your your godparents are great um, the all your friends back home that that supported you and. And your family. I mean, it's great to go back and see them. So I get that feeling like when we go back to Redwood City, 
you know, Chips and Paula mm -hmm. and Bill and Linda. So we, it, it feels like home. So I like that. And going to Chicago, now there's not really a home. You know what I mean? Right. So it's a little different. It's not like I'm going, oh, I'm going to be staying at a certain place that makes me feel that... Although I a lot of Although great there is friends. Wrigley. Wrigley feels like home. Well, yeah. And so when we do go back, it will be home at Wrigley. Yeah, well, that's it. It's in it Wrigley does feel that way. Um and I have great friends back home, but it's just it's 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 not home anymore. Yeah. So yeah, I guess I am a a California. Well, we'll take you on. Man. You're adopted. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You know, my mom and dad from the West Coast from Seattle. That's true. Both of them. You are a West Coast man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So uh but you know, when they went to Chicago, they went all in and um, they became sh Chicagoans. And my dad, I'm, Chicago was everything to him. And, but he never forgot about his roots in Seattle. I mean, he was an uh, inner city kid in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And we were kind of like, we grew up nice in, in Chicago. So um, yeah, it was, it was good times back there. All right. Yeah. So um, we got Pete Lecoq, part two. Enjoy. Gino's East of Chicago, doing deep dish in Chicago since 1966. Now has an L.A. location. Same great recipes, same great ingredients. That's no joke. Their deep dish tastes exactly the same as it does in Chicago. It's my favorite. I love the deep dish. And Gino's East is where I go when I want a taste from home. Named best pizza in L.A. by L.A. Times readers, and I certainly agree. Plus, there's a full menu of Italian favorites. Chicago Tavern style pizza and the Italian beef sandwich. Dine in for great food straight from the oven or do carry out or delivery. For great pizza and great atmosphere, go to 12924 Riverside Drive in Sherman Oaks, near the corner of Riverside and Coldwater Canyon, just off the 101 and Coldwater Canyon exit. Or order online. Go to genosease.com. Where was your locker in that small clubhouse? Uh, I was. I was all the way, if you went, walked straight down, all mm -hmm. the way across, I was that last one on, on the right there. Oh, I think I was the only one. That was probably the only locker they had available. I don't know. It was a right. crappy locker. Dude, room. that thing was so small. Yeah, it was <laughs> unbelievable. And what was, who did you gravitate towards as a player when you got there? Billy. I was on my okay. own. But, you know, Billy... Billy had a broken foot. He had a broken ankle, so he cast on. And so he, he I, I mean, I went to BP, uh, early BP, I'll take it. Early BP, I'll take it. And he was out there every day, and he, he helped me. And, you know, he, if you want a mentor, Billy Williams is the guy you want, you know, oh, especially being a left-handed hitter. I mean, yeah. first of all, he's one of the nicest people that God put on earth. And he sure he's probably the, one of the greatest hitters I've ever seen. I played with some great hitters, man. I played with George Brett, Bill Madlock. I mean, yeah. come on, man. I played you with really guys did. that could really hit. Yeah. So yeah. Al McCray, my favorite player. Yeah, no, uh, those were some good teams you played on, on the Royals, man. Yeah, the, the, those guys can hit. When when you got this, when you were at Chicago, did what was it like? Like, how did you get along with Beckert, my dad, and those guys? How'd that go? Your dad was so nice to me. I can't even tell you. Kessinger was kind of shy and Beckert was, he, he was kind of a different guy, but Pepitone and Randy Hunley and, and Billy Williams and Ferguson Jenkins. What a guy. Fergie Jenkins yeah. was a guy that really, he took me under his wing. We go, we, we go out to dinner because you're out to dinner with me and you're not paying. Okay. <laughs> you know, he was, he was as generous and as nice a man as, as you could find. Yeah, no doubt, man. Um, so you're there in 72, and then 73, you start to see the transition of the 1969 Cubs are kind of almost out the door after 73, right? Yes. And you know, I went, from, I went from one era to the next. I went to the old baseball era to a new baseball era. And uh, I kind of like the old baseball era. But, uh, you, know, uh, it, you know, it was a little different. What was the but, difference uh, for you? They played hard nosed baseball. The, the, the guys like, you know, you know your dad, uh, Pepitone, Hunley. I mean, they, they they were they were hardcore baseball players. Today it's different. I mean, with the Latin players. There's so many Latin players that, you know, when I was there, the only Latin player we had was uh, was Jose Cardinal. And remember Roberto Rodriguez? Yeah. 
Jose, I, I remember well. Roberto, I don't remember so much, but Jose for sure, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you remember Juan Pizarro? I do, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. He was one of the strongest guys i ever seen. I saw him take down uh, Dave Kingman in a fight. Oh, wow. He, wow. He grabbed Kingman, and he, Kingman was on the ground. And I said, Wow. Wow. Yeah. Jose was uh Jose was cool. Yeah, I, I really liked Jose out there. Um and for a for a small guy boy, he could he could he could hit. You know, he could hit he the could long crush ball. the ball. Yeah. We'd go into we'd was, go into LA and I was the fourth outfielder and so he goes, Hey, uh Pinga, is Big Pinga gonna be there tonight? And I said, Yeah, he's gonna be here and he goes, I don't feel very good. You're gonna have to play. And he'd always let me play a game or two in LA in my home because you know, he just say, "I don't feel yeah. good." You go ahead and play, and wow. yeah, I, I love Jose. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, so when when the, the transition happened and one era went to the next, did you? What was your like vision as a player? Did you think you were going to be a full time starter, or did you fall into more of the role player and say, "Okay, this is who I'm going to be"? You know. I, I, I didn't know what I was going to be. All I know is that if you put me in a lineup, I'll give you everything I got. You know, and unfortunately, I was a good pinch hitter. And that's what kind of, uh, you know, kept me on the bench more than I wanted. Like, Whitey Herzog, I used to go down when Whitey was managing with the Royals. I'd be tapping the bat right next to him. He goes, get out of here, Lecoq, because I, sh- I should be playing. I'm saving you for an at-bat and later in the game. I said, no, no, you know, I just always wanted to play. And, uh you know, that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to play. You know, it's it's because I was talking to Joe Joe Amafitano, and and he was talking about he's a. I had to learn like where I could use my skills and stay in the big leagues. You know what I mean? Where some guys might think, oh, I can do more, and then they're out of the big leagues. And did you did you kind of settle in with that because you did have a lot of tools, right? What was the reason you think that you you weren't playing full time, but you were still hitting you know around three hundred? You know, I, I I really think in the National League, pinch hitting was a big deal. And and I remember uh, it seemed like they always wanted me for the end of the game to stick me in there to see if I could win a game or something like that. Um, but, you know, again, I really don't know, Jeff. If I, if I could figure it out, I'd love it. But when I went to the Royals, it was, a you know, you're in a platoon system. You know, you play against right-handers and you don't play against left-handers. Oh, okay. That's pretty much what it was. And so I just, uh, all I did is I was the first guy at the ballpark. I worked harder than anybody. And all I wanted to do was just give it my best and see what happens. And that's what, that's kind of the attitude I had. Wow. When you were in Chicago, did you, where did you go in the winter when the season was over? Did you go back to California? Hell no. Two years in nope. Venezuela, two years in Puerto Rico, a year in Mexico, and a year in Dominican. I played winter baseball. Wow, man. You didn't stop. Okay. No, wow. I played 330 games my first year. Holy cow. Do you think that helped or hurt you? Oh, it helped me a lot. I learned so much in winter baseball. I mean, I played with, you know, like my first year in Mexico, I played with all the San Diego Padre guys, Johnny Grubb, uh, you know, Dave Hilton, you know, all of them went to winter ball. And these guys were all had big league contracts. And Dave Garcia, I don't know if you remember Dave, he was our manager. and you know, he saw me in double A and he goes, you want to go to Mexico? I said, Mexico. Yeah, I'll go to Mexico. They, they pay you good. They give me $5,000 a month, a place to live in a car. I said, yeah, I'll do that for sure. And, uh, yeah, it, winter baseball is a lot of fun. I don't know. It's, it's not the same anymore. I mean, Venezuela is crazy. You can't, you can't even go there right. now. Yep. But, uh, you know, Puerto Rico was fun. And, you know, I, in Venezuela, I played with David Concepcion, the Alomar brothers. You know, they oh, were wow. – and, and so you you learned a lot of baseball from these guys. Yeah. You know, it was weird because, like, in 69, they talked about the day baseball might have been the reason why they faltered in the end in September. And they played the guy – like, Leo played the guys too much. But those guys played that many innings back then, you know? So you're right. And you're you're playing all these innings in the winter. So it's really like my dad would always say, well, you know, I didn't want to come out. They weren't going to take Ernie out or Billy, you know. So most of the guys, um, did you think the day baseball did affect you come September in Wrigley? No. Are you kidding me? I love day baseball. 
How could you not love day baseball? Right? I'd get to the ballpark at 7 o'clock in the morning. I'd run my dog. I'd run my Siberian Huskies on the field. And, uh, and I, you know, I, I, I ran I, every day. And then, you know, take, I lived at uh, Pine Point Plaza, which is just six blocks away. Walk them back, put them in the, in the apartment, come back. And at 9.15, we had extra hitting. <laughs> Are you kidding? That's a pretty damn good day. Oh. Yes. Did you go out at night, too? You know, he, he always went out and got a, a good meal. And, uh, you know, there were so many great restaurants. And I got involved with the Let Us Entertain You Corporation, Great Gritsy's Fine Food Show, Jonathan Livingston Seafood, Lawrence of Oregano, all the, I remember all those restaurants. Yeah. They were yeah. all good, too. And, and uh, you know, the pump room, geez, there was good food there. Right. So that transition, yeah. though, from, like, playing day, day ball at Wrigley and then going and playing night ball, did that affect you at all? Or what did you feel like changing the time zones on that? You know, it didn't bother me. But, again, you know, um, not much bothered me. I just wanted to get to the ballpark and play. You know, if you play at night, that's good. The only thing that bothered me, AstroTurf. It was terrible. It was hard yeah. on me. Hard on my well, feet. Hard on your my knees. feet are my feet mostly. My my knees. No, I didn't bother. My knees are good. I never had surgery or anything. But my ankles and my feet they hurt. <laughs> they hurt today. It seemed, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's it seemed like you were kind of this laid back surfer kind of attitude and worked your ass off. What a cool way. That's to all I did. So so it nothing was, really got beautiful. got you too pissed off. You kind of stayed you stayed even keel uh, throughout, huh? I did. I did. And I, I, you know, I, my dad, I, I, I say my dad because I watched him, you know, being a really famous guy and he kind of just took it in stride and was thankful all the time. And my dad's a great guy. I don't know if you, if you knew my dad very well. And he's, he's I, I, struggling I right now. Yeah. He, he, 97, he's right? Struggling. He's 97. Yeah. Three years of, he's a long haul COVID guy. So, mm. uh, he, he Sorry. should have died two years ago. And, and he's, he's got, you know, since my brother died, he's become a, a kind of a cynical guy to say, you know, I, I think I want to go see Dave. That's mm. what he gets. He told me that about uh, three weeks ago. And so, yeah. And, you know, he can't walk right now and he's on oxygen and, you know, it's, it, it, he's used yeah. to singing and dancing and, and, you know, doing shows. You know, and 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 wor- he he worked his ass off. Um, like I said, he was doing Broadway, flying back, doing Hollywood Squares, wow. flying back. Doing, I mean, gosh dang, he worked hard. Yes, yeah, he did. Sounds like that. Wow, man. And you know, all those kind of guys in that era really worked their ass off to get where they were. I mean, you know, it, people hey, don't realize. Didn't get what- it to you. <laughs> no, they sure they sure didn't, man. And um, no, your dad did. Your dad had to be proud though when you were in the bigs, right? Did he follow you a lot? Did your family oh, yeah. follow you? Yeah. Yes, yes. My dad was a great supporter. He'd wear Cub jackets on the Hollywood Squares, and then he'd wear Royals jackets on the Royals. And you know, but in the World Series, he was you know he was filming that that night, and and he'd be coming back to the, into his locker in his dressing room. What happened? What happened? What happened? Trying to figure out. You know, in the playoffs and World Series, playoffs at Yankee Stadium. Let me tell you something. I was so lucky to play in that. Gosh dang, that was fun. Wow, your te- your, your years on the Royals. Uh, what were those like? Uh, you know, just the same thing, except that uh, they were a little more serious about winning. You know, they did. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the the locker room was patrolled by guys like Hal McRae and George Brett and Amos Otis, and you know, there were a lot of really guys that they, they if, if you slacked off or you did, weren't doing good they'd let you know and so yeah it, it was really kind of a it was a tough locker room <laughs> yeah 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 what do you feel like the, the my dad's locker room was like i mean those guys were pretty those guys were serious too i mean as, as far as you know but that that was coming a time when you got there was kind of they were they were maybe over their peak right <laughs> Yeah, maybe, but they still had that desire and that want. And, you know, even though we were in last place in September, you know, they really wanted to win no matter what. Yeah. Maybe yeah. We, let's yeah. try to finish in fourth place, you know. And, right, uh, yeah. That's yeah. the way it was. And yeah. Great competitor. I mean, you know, with, with Don Kessinger and your dad and Randy Hunley and these guys and Billy Williams, they, they were intense competitors. 
Yeah. Yes, they were. Now, when you were when you were uh, with the Royals, you hit like I mean, you hit like three hundred. So you were a platoon guy. You're playing when right handers are are pitching, and you and you're hitting three hundred, like three hundred two years in a row, and then close to three hundred the next year uh, in '79, and then 1980, you suddenly retire at such a young age, and you're a free agent. What 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 happened there? You know, baseball just wasn't as much fun to me as it as it used to be. You know, and I knew this in 1980, they were going to strike. So I went to Japan. I don't know if you remember that. I went to Japan. I played in Japan. Okay. And, uh, and, and they gave me a lot of money to go play in Japan. And you know who got me the job? Jim Marshall. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. He was, a, I guess he was, a you know, bringing people in. And I remember I got a contract that I could have never gotten here in America. And I said, well, you know, I've got my family. I'm getting, you know, just. My my second child was born over in Japan, and uh, so you know I don't know I just thought that I've got enough and I should you know spend more time with my children. That's that's you know you know what that's like. I mean yeah, it, it's a tough deal having kids and being gone all the time. Uh, plus I, I it wasn't as much fun. You know I enjoyed I had fun I, and and I worked hard and I just. I wasn't having that much fun. <laughs> Tell you the truth. Uh, yeah. All right. That makes sense, man. Yeah. You know, for me as a kid growing up, it was kind of our life. So we we were used to the schedule. You know what I mean? Like when he's gone and, sure. and then spring training, we would go out as a family. So it was part of our schedule. I almost felt like when he quit playing, you know, I was like 11, 12. It became a different world. And that was kind of strange to me, you know, like the change of the world. Um that we weren't doing the same kind of structure anymore. So I felt I was more affected by that than, you know, him leaving or whatnot. I, that didn't bother me at all because we were so tuned into the game, you know? Yeah. So, wow. so in 19, in 1980, I mean, after, after you retired, um, what, what were you, what were you doing until then you got back into the game later on? Oh, I, I went to Japan. I played in Japan in yeah. 1981. And then yep. the, um, I came back and I tried to find a coaching job and that was, it was weird. You know, I, I, I talked to the Royals and they weren't interested in all having a, having a ex Royal. I, I didn't know anybody really with the Cubs in their front office and stuff. So I just kind of went around and, you know, I coached with the Cardinals for a couple of years and I, I, in the last few years uh, that I coached, I was in independent baseball. I spent four years in uh, the Lincoln Salt Dogs. Remember I, them? I said I, the names that you played on the Joe's Black Snakes, the Lincoln Salt yeah. Dogs. I mean, yeah, some the Tucson then, Toros, the Tucson Toros, and then the Lake yeah. County Fielders. You played on Kevin Costner's team. Yeah, or, I did. No, you, you, I did. You, you were a hitting coach, coach, right? I was. I was. And do you remember Tim Johnson? Tim Johnson. No. no. You'll remember him. Timmy Johnson was the manager Tim of the John. Toronto Blue Jays. Oh, yes. And, yes, yes, yeah. yeah. And he's, you know, he was a Marine. And he, he was one night, I guess he was in a bar saying, yeah, I, I went, when I went to Vietnam, and then, he never went to Vietnam. And when they found that out, that was it. You know, you don't lie about your military stuff and it was yeah. gone. I mean, he, he, he never did anything in baseball and he's, I think he's, he's, he just got inducted in the Mexican coaching hall of fame. <laughs> he, he's been down there forever coaching and I think metamorphosis, wow. Wow. you know, that's a tough league down there. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Did, you, did you know Kurt Russell and Bing Russell? I knew Kurt. Did you, uh, well, I didn't you know did. Bing. Well, because Bing I had that, that independent league. Okay. Yeah. You, you well, I mean, up? Sajak had a team. I mean, they're, they're, people were – I mean, they're building $20 million stadiums for independent baseball now. Fort Worth just built this beautiful stadium. And, you know, uh, independent baseball is an interesting – what I liked about it is you pick your players, you pick your, the way you want to play. You want, you want a power game, you want a speed game, you want good pitching, good defense. And, you know, you try to find the best team you can. And, you know, you go down to spring training there, they're like 1500 kids every spring get released. And there, some of them are really good. And so you get to know uh, some of the coaches and stuff and you, you, 
you learn say, hey, you got a good shortstop, or you got a good second baseman, or well, we released this guy and I really liked him, and blah 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 blah, and that's the way you work independent baseball. Wow, man! And and how how hard does it go from independent to the bigs? Well, there were some guys that made it. You know, most of them were pitchers. You know, guys that, you know, they 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 didn't know how to throw, and all of a sudden you got a guy like Ron Davis helping you out. You know, they can teach you something, and uh, that's that's just the way it goes. It, it's it's hard to get to the big leagues no matter what. You know, yeah. so yeah. you know, especially when when I got brought up, and there were only eighteen teams. You know, oh, and yeah. uh, now there's thirty. Now there's 30 teams. There's a lot of baseball players to be had out there. But with the Latin players, I mean, you've been to spring training, what it's like. I mean, you Mm -hmm. go to a spring training, and in the back there's 400 Latin players, you know, uh, trying to find a spot, and uh, they can get them cheap. They, they, you know, and, uh, you know, it's it's changed the game uh, for sure. Yeah, what do you think of the game today versus when you play? I mean. Uh, I'd hate to be playing right now. like I, like I said, I, I, there's there's a few reasons why, but I think mostly because there's not team camaraderie. You know, you look at a guy like Robin Yount who played the same organization for 22 years, or George Brett mm-hmm. who played the same organization, and you know, you see guys like that that I was lucky enough to play with, and they had loyalties. There's no loyalties in baseball anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So and, you know, and the money's changed a lot, and the, you know, these pitch counts, the pitchers coming out early, it's. It is really a different oh my game God. now, you know. Yeah, you I know, mean, my first year in the big leagues, minimum salary was eighteen thousand dollars. Today, it's five hundred ninety-seven thousand dollars. That's minimum yeah. salary. Yeah, it's yeah. just it, the money has changed it a lot. That's for sure. That's and not, the culture. I'm telling you, it's just not as fun. It's fun. It's not as fun. That makes it kind of hard. My fingers hurt. I can't play today. You know. I saw guys with bones sticking out of their skin, tape it up, and I'm coming in there, you know, where today yeah. it's not like that. Yeah, and it seems like the culture, even even youth baseball, I mean, they're 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 out these travel teams that parents pay a lot of money for their kids to get on it's <laughs> yeah. year-round yeah. thinking that they're going to be a Mike Trout or something, and, and you know how difficult it is to get there, you know? I mean – Wow. Well, Arizona's Arizona. There's a lot of good high school players, and I remember I was yep. working in the off season. I'd work at this place, and we we would teach kids baseball. And you'd see a mother come in with their son, and you know, son looks like he's a good athlete. Well, he's going to try out for for Chaparral High School. I said, really? I said, how many years have you been playing? He oh, he, this is only his second year. I said, don't even try. Don't 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 even try. There's nothing I can do that will help you enough. So you can make this team because you're so far behind. You know, you look at the kids in Little League, 12 years old, these kids are schooled, man. They can play. And, yep. you know, the Japanese, you look at them, they, they, they practice seven hours every day, you know. Right. They're yeah. 12 years old, you know. Come on. <laughs> a kid right. be a kid. Right. You know, and when, when we grew up and when you played, it's, it's kind of like, okay, you play other sports. You know, spring, summer, you play play baseball, but you're not doing that in the winter, you know? No. But uh, well, they're doing it all year round, even in Chicago now. They're doing it indoors, you know? So, yeah, that's right. It's yeah, all changed. It's, it has. It that, has. And not for the better, I'd say so, but that's my opinion. No, you know what? I'm, 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 I'm with you there because I feel like, you know, when you're watching a game, you're into a game. You're in a. It's a dramatic game, and then they pull a guy because his pitch count's getting up or something. And you're like, "Well, that next guy that comes in, if you're a hitter, you're like, all right, we couldn't hit that guy. Bring another guy. He's nice." <laughs> I, I agree. I remember they used to hand Fergie the ball and said, "You're going nine, son." You know, and, yeah. and look at the complete games. I, how many complete games were there this year? Would you say or last year? You think there were. 20 maybe at the most i don't know maybe not you know and you know ferguson jenkins and you know gaylord perry and guys like that they had over 300 complete games it's come on i know man i mean you'll never see a you'll never see a 300 game winner again um that that that's kind of impossible today Uh, i think you're right i think you're right the pitchers you know and i feel like it's a structure now like the structure starts even in in when the kids are young 
you know, and that structure goes to where they're watching arms closely and, and the weight training and all that. But um, where do you think it's headed? Do you think there's a, this analytics, do you think it stops? Do you think we go back to a little bit of gut? Um, what do you think about all that? You know, it depends on, on who's running it. You know, you, 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 you know, you, there, there aren't any really managers. There's maybe a Joe Madden, you know, who, who you find guys that you want to play for this guy, you know, or Tony La Russa, you want to play for this guy. And, you know, uh, it's not, it's not like that anymore. I mean, I mean, I think Joe Madden is, was a great manager and he doesn't have a job, yeah. you know, no. No. but I know Joe really well, but I think he's just happy where he is. I think maybe next yeah. year he may, he may look into something, but you know, I, I things have changed. It's, it's who's running the whole thing that makes a difference. You yeah. know, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, um, Billy's still with Oakland. So what the heck he's doing something right. Are they going to get, uh, are they going to switch over to Las Vegas? I, I don't know, man. It might happen. Um, with the managers, when you play, who was your favorite guy that, that managed you? Why did he yeah, Oh, yeah. I and why was that? What did you love about him? He was a no-nonsense guy, man. He let you know. And and you could let him know, too, how you felt. And he wouldn't hold it against you. And, uh, you know, I, I liked I, I liked small ball, I, you know, especially with, at uh, Royal Stadium where the biggest – biggest ballpark you know it's not a home run ballpark so you've got to change you got willie wilson he gets on base you know he's still second pal mccray gets him over and uh, george gets him in and that's just the way you know and you know they had good pitching you know good starting pitching and they had good relievers and you know good pitching good defense wins baseball games that's i'm convinced and uh some people may disagree but uh that's that's my opinion you know, we we grow up a certain way, and but I do believe though the small ball. I couldn't believe it with the with the when they when they had the switch going on the shift, why people wouldn't just lay it down all the time. Why in, wouldn't they, you lay it down? I don't know. Oh, I let, learned a bunt. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, just just to just to, to annoy the other team, just lay it down and keep doing it because you got guys that are. I mean, the averages today, Pete, where they're they're such the low two hundreds. You know, but they they can hit maybe thirty home runs or whatever. But you're hitting two hundred or one ninety eight. I mean, come on. I mean, that's striking out two hundred and twenty times. You know, yeah. but they hit thirty bombs, man. That's <laughs> yeah. There's they they love the home run. You know, it's uh, it's like Earl Weaver. You know, walk a guy, hit a home run, and hope their pitching holds up. Yeah. So. Yeah. I worked for him for a while, um, but you know, do you feel like the small ball can come back, or is it done? I think it's done. My opinion, really? it's done. People want to see home runs. People want to see the long ball. You know, they look what they've done with the baseball and the bat. I mean, they've they've made these balls hard as a rock, man. I, I mean, I threw BP for a lot of different teams, and they asked me. I see these little guys hitting balls. 450 feet, you know, and I, I, you feel the ball. It feels like a, a marble. I mean, it's hard. And the wow. bats with the, with all the new bats and stuff like that, the hardwood. And yeah, it's, I, I, you know, it's, it's like golf. I mean, you know, yeah, these guys yeah. are, you know, they got all the technology and I don't know, did, Jeff, if did I you, knew. <laughs> right. Yeah. But did you, did you, uh, did you, work out when you played or were you that was just natural strength right because most of those guys you just were naturally strong i worked i worked with a lot of weights you know but i didn't overdo it like some of these guys do it some of these guys are so tight man they they blow out pretty quick that's just my opinion you know did did you ever see billy williams pull a muscle (laughs) you know yeah no you know I, i don't know George yeah. Brett, uh, George Brett never picked up a weight in his life. Yeah, but he was that, such a spectacular hitter. Oh my gosh, he, he was fun to he, watch. But you guys, you guys swung bats though every day. You know, like you're always swinging the bat. Like my dad was always taking ground balls. Kessinger was always taking ground balls. These guys were their workout was on the field over and over. Again. Yeah, I look. I no. took at least two hundred ground balls every day, minimum. And wow. uh, I had, I was getting to an end where I was having trouble trying to find a coach that hit me. Come on, give me some ground balls. 
Charlie Lau. Remember Charlie Lau? Oh, absolutely. We, we used to come, we used to come out early every day, and he just loved to just try to pound balls at me. And you know, taking ground balls and astroturf, it's fun. I mean, you get a lot of true unless it's wet. Uh, <laughs> astroturf when it's wet is a scary thing. So. Yeah, totally. Totally. <laughs> it, it is. Yeah. Did, but uh, did yeah, you, did, the hard work. Hard work. Did you think like today? What? If you were to say, how could a guy get to the big leagues? Because, you know, you, you can have the talent, but don't you think mentally you got to be ready to, to, to take that competition on, to get there and to stay there, that the mind is a big deal in baseball? Well, I think Yogi had it right. It's, uh, you know, 10% physical and then 85% mental. I mean, it, it, you got you to gotta have it mentally. And you've got to be able to, to take, you know, failure. I mean, mm-hmm. how many times do you fail in baseball? My God. And you just right. gotta, you know, get over it. And some some people had a harder time getting over it than others. Yeah. So Yeah. And you gotta have that want the next day too. Like, okay, I'm gonna go in there the next day and and burn it up because I had a bad one the previous one. You know? Exactly. So, yes, you're right. Yeah. You are right. So so what gets a guy to the bigs today in your mind, Pete? Speed. If you're a player, you got to have speed, and you've got to be able to field the ball. You know, I mean, if you if you really want to make it to the big league, look at these look at these shortstops. You know that you know they're fabulous fielders, second base, and they're fabulous fielders. You know, and they don't need to hit very much. You know, uh, so I, I I think you got to have speed, you got to have endurance, you've got to have mental. You know, it's a mental strength, that's for sure. And when you say mental strength, what, 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 define that for me your way. Well, the, my way is, that, you know, if you, go, if you go 0 for 22 and you're on your 23rd at bat, you better have a good attitude because, <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> you got to be mentally strong, you know, because, hey, I, I saw George Brett go 0 for 27 one time. And then he turns around and goes 18 for 22, you know, and, you know, he's, he was mentally strong, man. He, all he wanted to do was just, you know, play baseball and hit. And, you know, it really frustrated him if, if he didn't, but he never gave up. That's for sure. That's it right there. The spirit, man. And did you, did you feel though what you were talking about fielding? You're talking about speed, but you got to hit too. If you don't hit. Right. Well, you got to hit. Yeah, you got to yeah. hit. That's just that you got to hit no matter what, right? You're talking about you yeah. need the extra, you need the feeling and the speed, but you got to hit is just the basic one you got to have. You got to hit. Yeah. I mean, if you can yeah. hit, you'll get to the big leagues. Yeah. You right will. Oh man. So, uh, yeah. God, how you doing? How you doing today, man? What's going on with you? You know, my life is is pretty good. You know, I've I've got I've, I'm in my bedroom because I have eight dogs out in my living room. And uh, sometimes they get a little loud, but you know my life is just uh, you know my dogs, my cats, uh, you know, and just I got two grandsons. They're nine and eleven, and I have a blast with them. They live here, and and uh, you know, so that's what keeps my life going. That's great, man. That's and plus, well, plus, you know, you know, I'm, I, I've got some good health. You know, I'm not a guy like you know, it's like like my stupid brother who didn't get vaccinated, and uh, you know, now I'm now he's gone, and uh, oh man. So I just thank God every day I'm here and I'm not sick, and I I wish something could happen with my dad because he's yeah. miserable. He's miserable. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I'm so, very sorry to hear that, man. Um, your dad's lived a long, good life, though. Uh, you know, so yeah, that's tough. Sure has. Him. In that state, you know, I, that, that's not, that can't be easy. No doubt about it, man. It is very hard, very hard. And, you know, yeah. I'm watching him deteriorate, and that is sad because he yep. was, I mean, he was so vibrant. I mean, you know, he's always going, going, but now he's not going and going. He's just, he doesn't want to leave his house. You know, he he doesn't want to go out to eat. He just wants to stay home and with his dogs. Yeah, one of his dogs yeah. got killed by a coyote yesterday. Whoa. Oh, my God, man. Jeez. Yeah, you, he, you know, he lives in Encino. You know where my dad lives, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he's got a big, giant fence, and stupid coyote jumped over and took one of his dogs. 
Oh my God, man. Oh. Yeah. So that stuff is hard to, for him to, you know, accept. He just has a hard time with that. Well, anybody would, but yeah, <sighs> that, that is the, you know, when my dad, I, I was thankful that my dad, when his cancer, bladder cancer came back, he, he got chemo and he went quick because I, we would have hated to see him go through, you know, a year of, you know, down, you know, falling down from hey. where he, where he always has been. And, um, so we were fortunate on that. And I think that's just his spirit too. I think he knew my dad would have, he kept fighting and fighting with all his legs, you know, the two legs being amputated that when the fight was over, like he kind of knew it. It wasn't until the very, very end because he fought his yeah. whole life. You know, I remember him coming to a fantasy camp, you know, and seeing everybody and, and he just loved to be out with all the guys. He, sure he did. did. He loved it. He loved he it. He sure did, man. Yeah. And, and I was lucky enough the... to go get up on the booth a couple times with him. Right, He'd ask right, me, hey, right. man, if you're in town, come on down. Come on down. I want to get you on the show. And you know, he just made me feel so happy, wanted, like, you know. Yeah, he, he, your dad was a totally class act. You know that. Though. Yeah. I think sure everybody was, does. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and getting getting to – and so are you, man. And getting to the fantasy camp, me and Ronnie were on your team at one of the camps, and we won it all. <laughs> And yeah, I know that. <laughs> that, was, that was a great time, man. And those camps, that man, was a great time. Has, oh man. And those camps have been so wonderful for so many people. Um, yes. that, uh, Randy really gave a gift to everyone when he invented the first fantasy camp, man. So I wish the Cubs yeah. would work with him a little bit here. I know, know man. It's a different like uh, I know. game now, right? I mean, <laughs> yes, it is. You know what yes, I mean? It it's is. just come on. Yeah, Randy. Come yeah. On. Yeah, come on is right, man. So really um, well, Pete, when you come out, you know, I'm I'm in Burbank, California. I know you get out here once in a while. We gotta hook up when you get out here. We gotta go over to Joel's uh he's got a Ted Kennedy's bar in his in his house that you'll love. And uh we, you gotta come out and we'll have a good time. Hang well, on. maybe what, when I come out, you will come on. You can come over and uh, see see my dad at his house. He would love that. I would love to. I would love to. Okay. Man. Oh, yeah. an honor. Yes. And, and if you want to do a podcast with with someone great, he's not a bad guy to do it with. Oh, he I'll sure see is. I'll do it. Oh, that'd be great, man. Oh, wow. I'll thank I'll, you, man. I talk to him almost every day. I'll call, when I talk to him today, I told him I did a podcast, podcast with you, and would you be willing to do one with him? And he will probably oh, say, amazing, yeah. amazing, man. All right. And wow. he's still sharp. He's, he's still sharp, sharp, sharp. He oh, I'm is sure still, he is, man. He hasn't lost a thing. I would love to mentally. talk to him. Oh, wow. All right. Well, I'd love talk to meet to him in person, man. Okay. Yeah. Awesome, Well, man. Jeff, thank you know, so I love much you. for doing I love this. your family. Love thank you, you for having me. All righty. God bless everybody. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Pete. Hello to your family, and, and please let me know when you're coming this way, okay? I will. Thanks, Jeff. All right, Pete. Take care, buddy. Uh, bye-bye. Mm-hmm. Bye. That moment was brought to you by Tangent West, executive recruiters, headquartered in Denver, with offices in Vail, Colorado, and New Orleans. Since 1995, Tangent West has conducted executive searches nationally and internationally. They place C-level executives, management positions, high-level executive assistants, marketing and accounting, and finance. Cheryl Grimaldi, president, has personally interviewed over 36,000 candidates and has filled over 2,500 searches. I've known Cheryl for decades. She's a dear family friend and someone you can trust. She's been at this for a long time. Tangent West, hunting human excellence and building the country's finest companies since 1995. Because nothing matters more than hiring the right people. If you're hiring, go to www.tangentwest.com. I'm going to Cracker Jack Jimmy Boudreau, son of Hall of Famer Lou Boudreau. Jimmy also played college ball with my brother Ron Jr. Here we go. Cracker Jack. Hello. This call is Jimmy Boudreau. Yes. Jeff Santo, you're my Cracker Jack call. Jeff Santo, are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. You know, you know what? I figured, how long is it going to get before I finally get on? You talk to your brother, you talk to Joey. 
<laughs> you're it, you know, man. You're I was going to send you a note saying, you know, I'm a little bit hurt. Oh, well, come on, man. You just, I'm I tried just to kidding. call you and it rang and rang and you didn't pick up because you didn't recognize the number, right? Uh, the first time I did not recognize the number, correct. And it, 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 I'm assuming you were in Arizona. It wasn't Arizona area code, so I kind of let it go. No, I, I apologize I, to you and your listeners. No, I, I, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. Doing good. Yourself? Good. Good. It's been a long good. time. It's been too long, you know, sadly. Know, but man. as we get older, it seems to space out a little bit too far. It does. The last time you were in Arizona, uh, I was not there, obviously. Um, yeah. But they, they said they had a, a, a riot talking with you and Ronnie, my mom and Liz uh, and some friends. Yeah, so, absolutely. It's great to see your mom, by the way. I had not seen her in years either. She looked great. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. She's 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 getting by, man. She's eighty two. Yeah. Can you believe that? That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. It's crazy, crazy. Hey, man, I got a couple of questions for you. Okay. Yeah. Um, first one, you played baseball. Uh, the people who know you, obviously, but but a lot of people out there don't. You were a pitcher, a very successful one. Tell me about. Was there any pressure with you playing ball because of your dad, Lou? Um, but you were a pitcher, so tell me about right. that. that- that was the big piece. If I would have played shortstop, sure, probably would have been a lot worse. And then to be honest, because there was such a, a difference between myself and my brothers, and, and when, when people would come up to me to go ask if, well, is Lou your grandfather? They didn't, you know, there's quite a difference because, you know, he was quite older when I was born. Right. So, but being, being completely opposite, being a pitcher, being left-handed, no, not, not a whole lot of comparisons. The only really pressure to that was stuff that I put on myself, you know, trying to kind of... Right live up to that kind of stature if you will right and now you were a you were a left-hander you 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 played with ronnie at scottsdale and joey right tell me about that yeah yeah well when i first it was funny because when i first got to scottsdale community college um whitey lockman's kid was there skip lockman and then as was joey and then they left i came i was there and then ronnie came in and the coach used to always talk about, well, what's the deal? Is this the Cubs connection here? We got Lockman, Sano, Boudreaux. What's going on? So, but uh, it wow. was awesome. I mean, I loved, I loved playing with the brother. He would probably say the opposite because, you know, as, as pitchers, you know, same at, in the big leagues, pitchers would hit fungos to the infielders, right? Pre-game. Right. So I'd right. always raise my hand, Coach Nelson at the time. I said, Coach, I got third base. Knew when it was Ronnie. And I used to beat the hell out of him with ground balls. You know, him him with his shin splinters. Yeah, he used to get so mad at me. Oh, so man. that was that was so it was, was fun. Yeah. What was Ronnie like like a ball player at, at junior college? Tell me what you thought. You know, I, Ronnie was good. Ronnie just it yeah. wasn't his passion. You know, it's, truthfully, you know, to to play in the game, you got to have that passion. It's got to be a live, breathe, and die kind of thing. You know, and right. at that time, you know, Ronnie liked the working out, the lifting weights, and doing that. And and he was good size, but but yeah. back then the lifting weights wasn't to maintain it was to get bigger you know back back then and that's what he did so he'd make two or three great throws and then because his arms got so big what you know another throw that would go way in the right field somewhere you know but he was he was fun to play with uh he got me in a lot of trouble at times but it was it was fun it was completely fun yeah he was yeah he was a good fielder good hitter good athlete all around you know that yeah Um, absolutely i think you're right about that and you guys you guys roomed together didn't you uh, later on, we did not, not there in Scottsdale. We were, but we were oh, literally a okay. hundred yards. Yeah. A hundred yards from each other. They had their apartment and we had ours. Oh, God, they had, they had some guys over there, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, um, you know what? I, I, part of me, 50% of me wishes there were phones and videos that we could take. And the other 50%, thank God there were no videos or phones that we could right, take pictures of. Right, man. Right. You know, did oh, you- just. Stupid humor stuff. Just stupid stuff. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt, man. Did you – now, you went on to play at ASU, so you're an ASU yeah. alum, which is a great school. Tell us tell us about that. Yeah, ASU was awesome. Um, it, it came about actually kind of as a last minute. wasn't sure what I was going to do. Uh, and then uh, Coach Brock at the time had called me up and, and offered me the position. I was, I was like, absolutely. So uh, I had the chance to play my final two years at ASU. Um and then my, my first year there was in, God, date myself, in 81, you know, we were, we were a phenomenal team. I think there was five or six players on the team that ended up going to the big leagues, but won the World Series that year. And then the following wow. year, I felt we had a better team than we did in 81, but we lost in the first round, um, Cal State Fullerton, which oh, was wow. kind of a, well, which is a huge upset. But 
really disappointing because I actually thought our team was better in 82 than it was in 81, but it it was great. Great experience from the fans. I, I just wish it was like today. I don't know if you've been over oh, there to the stadium and the clubhouse yeah. Oh, yeah. and what they've yeah. done for the college sports is incredible. You oh, know, no we doubt. used to get dressed in the basketball area and then have to drive over to the field. Now they're, yeah. they're like big league clubhouses. Oh, that, it's, yeah. crazy. It, it, it's crazy. I was over there. I saw that. And um, when you guys played at the old field with Brock, though, Brock was a legendary coach. Oh, mean, absolutely. Tell me, yeah. But, yeah, tell but me what's funny like playing is, for him. Yeah. Coach Brock was awesome, except he didn't like pitchers. It was, you know, because he was there, him and him, they all, it was all about runs back then. It was hitting, you know, pitchers were like, yeah. you know, an added, you know, they're like in his mind, probably like, that's ah, someone we have to put out there, but he was really good. You know, he was, he was um, fundamentally very sound. He would talk a lot about the fundamentals, not only the hitting, but the pitching standpoint. And then I had a pitching coach named Tim Kelly, who was, he was awesome. I think he helped me he, probably more than any of them, including in the minor leagues. You know, he he was awesome. So, but that whole ASU experience was great. They haven't won a World Series since. Since, yeah, since 81, right? Yeah. Um, right. You got a ring, though, right? Where's your ring? Yeah. Rings at home. I have that home and a little, but, you know, I'll tell you this, though, the rings then, it was like a big high school ring. It's not like they are today. Okay. So, yeah, okay. it's, it's yeah, just, right. this, yeah. it looks like a yeah, silver high schoolish kind of ring. I'm I'm very proud of it. I just, I wish it was like today's, but even the ones today, well, you saw, like the Cubs ring, you, you can't wear those. That's no, it's yeah, two fingers. Exactly, yeah. yeah, right. Two what, fingers. What did what did you now who was on that team in A one? Some of the stars. The hitters. Uh, let me see. We had uh Elvin Davis, who was our first baseman. Mm-hmm. Elvin at, at ended up being rookie of the year with Seattle. We had um Kevin Romine in center fleet center field. He played with the Boston he played with a few different mm-hmm. teams. Kevin Romine, we had Elvin Davis, we had Lemmy Miller, uh Donnie Hill. Um, oh god, yeah. Okay. I'm trying, I'm trying to think there was there was a number of them, and I'm sure I'm missing a couple. Yeah. So yeah, Ricky Nelson. Oh man, he, he was. An old... And in '82, yeah. you had a had a great team. So you lost in the in the regionals right out of the box. You didn't get yeah, the World Series. Right out, yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, not even. Yeah. In fact, and we lost at home, which it was just it was a complete shock. It was just like a hit to the gut. We're like, it it, it just it it was crazy. But it's one of those things, you know. You you sometimes you get hot at the right time, other times you don't, and yeah. it, it was disappointing, disappointing, but. Hey, you know what? I, I got a ring from it. I did something that, you know, a lot of people yeah, don't man. have the opportunity to do. So I, I'm, I was thrilled with it. Absolutely. You know, I, when I was a kid, you know, going to spring training every year for the, for the Cubs spring training, me and Ronnie, we, we missed a month of school. And I knew of <laughs> ASU back then, right? ASU was huge. Yeah. It's like you, you dreamed of going to ASU because that's when they started getting real big in the uh, late sixties, well, early seventies. Um, yeah, so well, absolutely. They, you know, they that was that was it was a stud school for players. I mean, and, and yeah, totally. Really, the reason you know at that time, even from here in the Midwest, if you wanted to play ball, you had to go to, to Arizona or California or to Florida. You had to go to the warm areas. Right. Now you look at it; it's complete reversed. All these schools that are doing so well are East Coast or, or in the yeah. Midwest. You know, and, and shoot, Arizona State isn't even ranked; they're already out of it. I mean, it's just well, crazy. What's the difference now today, Jimmy, that you think that why these schools like ASU have kind of, uh, you know, middle of the road? I'm not saying they're still Division One top school, but what is it that, that makes makes a winner today in college? I think I think it's, it's the, the growing up, the facilities that you have now to go into. Um, you've got so many indoor facilities or, or the travel leagues are just nuts. You know, you're playing top competition. Uh, and if you're playing, if you're from the East, you don't have to go West anymore. You can, you can go to Vanderbilt, so you can go to right. LSU. You can stay in, in your home area and play for a, a D1 that's really, really good. Right. So, you know, we didn't have the facilities that they have now. You know, and, and private lessons, those were rare. Now everybody's doing private lessons, you know, and, yep. and I don't know if it has anything to do with it, but back in the day when I was growing up, you know, coaches liked you to play different sports because you work different muscle yeah. groups. Now it's like yeah. by eight years old, you have to determine what sport are you going to play because that's what you're going to do for the next ten years. Yeah. So there's, yeah, man, there's, it's, you know, it it, it yeah. seems you know it seems uh, different as far as like um, every school seems like a D one is kind of loaded. Uh, um, like you said, the southern schools are big, the eastern schools, so they're not getting yep. a lot of those guys over there in the Midwest like they did before. No, exactly. There's there's so many options now with for. You know, you don't have to spend all the money and pay out of state tuition. You can stay in state and play for a Division One in a great school. Yeah. The, the other difference yeah. is, is back. 
I, and I realize things change, you know, in, in, in the world overall, but if you back in, in 81 or 82, if you hit 90 miles an hour as a pitcher, you were throwing gas. Now I don't yeah. even think 90 is average. You know, and it's I think amazing. that has amazing. to do with, yeah. yeah, I think that has to do with all the lessons and, and the facilities and, and the, just the technology and, and all of that. It's crazy to me to think of that. What did you, what, what were you, were you high 80s? Were you finesse? I was, yeah, I was all pretty much finesse. I was 85, 86 on a good day. I could hit 87. If it's downhill and there's a big wind behind me, <laughs> you know, I'd hit 87. But we're, walks yeah, are my, you, you know. You were, you were needed, though. Yeah. You were lefty. So that, that, was, that, was the big, that was the big piece is being left-handed. So yeah. that, was, that was the part, you know. So I just didn't throw hard enough. And if it's, it's amazing, and you know, because you played, if you, you miss your spot, like, by two or three inches, that's the difference between a ground ball to second or, you know, a home run 400 feet to right. Yeah. It was, yeah. It, it's just crazy. So I, yeah, I you, was fortunate enough to, I, I, control was really good. I had good control. I just didn't. Yeah. That's why I remember, I remember that of you. Um, did you, yeah. did you have a chance to get drafted? Did you get drafted? Yeah, I got drafted. Actually, I got drafted by the Cubs. And, uh, oh, that's right. part of, okay. Yeah. Part of me, part of me was wondering, I'm like, okay, did you do something here, dad? Did you say something? But, you know, he didn't, he denied it. He denied it. So I played, I think two years, two years with the Cubs and then got traded and, and uh, finished the final three with Baltimore. Okay. So I played, played in the you? minor leagues. Um, I went, well, let's see. I was on a triple A roster in 86, but did not play in triple A. Uh, I went to big league camp in 86. Uh, oh, wow. Only in big league camp had like two innings. If that did okay, but then got sent back down to double A and that's where I finished up. And then at Did that you, time, I just thought, yeah, I, I, yeah, I was 26 at the time. I'm like, I don't want to be yeah. a minor leaguer yeah. my whole life. I got but, you, man. Did you yeah. did you think that you had a shot at one time, maybe? And I did actually in '86. I thought I did. Everything that everything was was perfect, and everything was working. And I say perfect just, I know for between the manager, between knowing situations, it was just that, you know, the big thing to win. And I think this is with the Cubs, it's that camaraderie, it's that, that friendship. It, it's the yeah. understanding of who does what and what, you know, at what time. And the manager and I just, it was a connection. I, I knew when I, I knew when to get up before he'd tell me to get up and actually had really yeah. good success that year. So, um, 80, 86 towards the end, when they call up the, call up the newbies, you know, it was Baltimore. So they were already, you know, out of the race. I thought I had a chance. They called up two guys off the team. Unfortunately, I was not one of them, but yeah. Oh man, that, still, yeah, that would be. Did, you know, still, let me I, ask you this, Jimmy. When when that ended for you, when you said it's over, how tough was that? It, it was hard. Uh, truthfully, the next couple of years, because every time around, you know, February, you're thinking, well, I got to get ready for spring training. Um, yeah. It was hard. The the thing that sticks in my mind, and you'll get a kick out of this, is um, I, you know, the way I describe it is, could I have made it to the big leagues? Yes. Could I have stayed in the big leagues? Probably not, because not what I threw was going to do there, you know. Um, but Steve Stone, when he was a Cubs announcer, was talking about some left-handed pitcher in the game. And he said, if you're a left-handed pitcher, you can play this game forever. And I just thought, yeah. you know what? <laughs> Kill, you're killing me, Steve. You know, but um, I wish I, wish I would have stayed another year or two. I did have an opportunity yeah. um, after Baltimore to uh, San Francisco had talked, and they had Roger Craig, who I think was the one who worked with Suter for a split finger fastball. Oh, wow. So not, not saying it could have made a difference, but I'm like, yeah. you know what? I, I'm 26. I don't want to be a lifetime major leaguer or minor leaguer, excuse me. Um, and the money was, you know, minimal. You didn't make a lot of money back then. Yeah. Right. And it was, a, it was a tough life in the minors. You know, um, it was. If, it, it was. I say that all the time. People think it's great, but it, it's hard. It's challenging. You know, not, and coming from a baseball life, I mean, we're our, our, our dads played it, and then your dad announced for so many years, and um, yep. that that had to be tough to say it's it's over. I know it was for me, and I wasn't even near anything like you were. It's just yeah. it's just in your mind, it's embedded in inside you that this is this is your life. Yeah, because it your is. father. I mean, did it, you know. Yeah, no, exactly. And and I'm sure there were times where we ran into each other at the ballpark at Wrigley. Just didn't, you know, we were kids and you see another kid, right. you don't think about it. But yeah, right. I spent many a summer there with my dad, you know, and, and it's just, you get used to it. It's just something you do all the time. Even after when yeah. I got out, I ended up, you know, somebody talked me into playing what they call that senior league. So I yeah. played in the senior league just to keep playing. But even that was different. And this is going to sound so arrogant, but th there were guys that played baseball where I had the chance to play professionally. 
I, it was, it, it wasn't, it was different. I'd go out and throw five innings and strike out 13 guys. Right. You know, it's just different. Yeah. So yeah, no I, I don't, certainly don't mean that to be cocky, but no, no, I, dude, it's different. It's a different, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, but um, absolutely. I still, I still, in my mind, I still say I can play. And I know if I threw the ball four times, I wouldn't be able to write my name tomorrow. <laughs> it, it's right. just, you know, it's just different. Yeah, exactly. I retired from softball two years ago because I couldn't walk the dogs in the morning. You know, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, That's and, it. and you know, your dad, Lou, I mean, I remember just as a kid, how nice he was. And, um, and your dad was the, was the manager that brought my dad up in 1960. Yeah. Was his first. Yep. Absolutely. They had, so your dad cool. has always been awesome. Yeah. I, I miss him as well. Um, your, your yeah. dad was great, you know? So no, yeah, he had a chance, and, you know, actually it was funny because, um, when your dad was thinking or had the opportunity to become a radio announcer, he called my dad. Oh, my wow. dad told me, he said, your dad's biggest fear is on the air. He's going to yeah. go, oh shit. He's going to say something. You know how emotional <laughs> right. he was. Yeah. He goes, yeah. Oh. what do I, how am I going to do that? You know? And I remember my dad telling me, he goes, tell me you have to come up with some kind of phrase or just keep in your mind something that, you know, makes you think opposite of what you're kind of thinking. Cause you're, you know, wow. your dad wore his heart on his sleeve. So, yeah, no doubt, know. man. And that's good advice. Yeah. Although that didn't work the first day, I think he spilled his coffee <laughs> and he said, shit, right? Yeah, or, absolutely. Uh, you know Christ, what? Or something like that. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's it. That's the normal. And that's what I think people love because he's a normal guy. He's not, he is. Yeah, and that he was, really, was great really about was. it. Yeah. yeah man. And I think you that know, was a big advantage to my dad being, you know, not at that time, not too many former players were on the air. Yeah. So, you know, uh, even today, people that remember, they're like, oh, I, I remember your dad. He, go, he used to always say, hey, for all you kids listening out there, you yeah. know, it's, it's, it was a teaching thing. So, yeah, your, your dad, too, man, which it's kind of cool because in 60, Charlie Grimm was the, the, the manager of the start of the season. I remember my dad always saying he had a great spring training. You know, um, they brought yeah. him in the camp. He just turned 20. And he thought he, he made the team and Charlie and, and they sent him down and they got Don Zimmer to play third. They traded for Don Zimmer. And then Charlie, something happened. He went up to the booth and switched with your dad. Your dad came down. Yeah. To the, the, yeah. Mid year, mid year. Like, no, 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 no. Mid year. Right. They switched. My dad went from the booth to the manager and then Charlie went up to the booth and, you know, That's the amazing. second half they did. Okay. They didn't obviously do well, but they, they did well enough to where they wanted to offer my dad a contract. And my dad wanted a two-year contract, and they wouldn't. They were not given a two-year contract, not for two years. Oh, God. <laughs> he said they wouldn't do a two-year contract. So next year, back into the booth, and that's where he was. You know, he did the radio there for thirty years. Yeah, God, I know he's great. He was, uh, yeah. And when he came down to manage, that, right after that was the. Then they did the whole college of coaches, right? It was at the box. Yeah, that was that was um, yeah, all that. That was a, that was a goof. That was not good. No, and your dad, um, my dad, I see he's the one that brought my dad up, said, no, we're bringing him up now, you know? Like, yeah, absolutely. Don, yep. you move over, Ron's taking over third base, which is which is <laughs> cool. And and we talk about, you talk about you were 26 when you retired. Like today, man, you know, like my guys like my dad were coming up when they were 20, right? And making the right. big to 20, so you have a long career. You have at least those power 10 to 15 years, or 10, 10 for sure. Nowadays, man, yep. what do you think of these players coming up? Like, even like I was talking, you know, some of these guys are, they're 24, 25 by the time they get there. Yeah. It, it's just, like I said, it's just changed, right? The world's changed all over the place, but it's just so different between when they come up, the, the, the speed, the, the money they're paying, it's ridiculous. You know, it, it's just crazy. You will never see like your dad and Glenn Becker, two major league roommates for what, 10 years? Oh yeah. They, yeah how How is that? That'll never happen again. You'll never get no, two guys on no, the same no. team in 10 years together. You know, it, it's no, a there's... different environment. And that's why I think, even back then between all, all the guys, you know, your dad and Becker and Billy and Ernie, they, they were, they were just, they were good friends. They were good oh, friends who played baseball. Friends. Basically, that's what it is. Yeah. Well, actually, you know, you know it, Billy and my dad played, they, they came up together basically. I mean, yep. they were in double A together and that whole thing um, where, you know, Billy won rookie of the year 61. Uh, my dad should have won in 60 if he got there the whole year, but he was half the year. So, you know, yep. he did, he, he had too many games to go and be in 61, but, and then Kenny Hubs came along. I mean, they would have had three rookies of the years in a row yeah. on that team. Yep. And then, well, and then the tragedy with Kenny Hubs. Yeah. Um, I said, well, Kenny dated my sister, my sister. Sharon no way, time. man. Yeah. You know, I was yeah. always, I was, I'm so interested to find out more about Kenny Hubs, man. You know, cause my dad loved that guy. Um, yeah, they, and they said he was phenomenal. 
God, I heard he was a great guy too. And then, and then my dad was devastated. Like when hubs died before the spring training of 64. And then like when Becker came over 65, he was like, I didn't want to talk. He didn't want to talk to a second pick, you know? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And then they became best friends, which is, you know, crazy. It's, it's, yeah, man, they were, they were starting to have a really good team. And then, you know, you think of hubs, my dad, you know, Billy and Ernie and wow. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just crazy to me. You think you had four or five hall of famers on a team and they didn't win. I know, like that man. doesn't happen very often. Way different league though, man. You know, I mean, you're, you're talking about you, you win the national league, you're going to the world series until 69 when they had the, the two divisions finally. Yeah. So it was hard to get yeah. there, you know? Yeah. Oh, hard to get yeah. there. Yeah, and, one, and once you got there, I mean, you have some of the hitters today swing as they – try and take some of the swings that they take off of like a Bob Gibson. Right. You know, Gibson yes. was putting – he'll knock you on your ass immediately. It was a yeah, different yeah, – it, it, it was a – it was a – and it's a neat yeah. time to watch. Some of those old films, I just it, – it's neat to watch. It is. It was even neat to watch like on WGM because you felt like the, you had that grainy feel. You felt the ballpark and everything. Now everything is – it's just – you know, they sh- yeah, shoot it, shoot it the same way, but it's it's HD and it's just you're just like, it's like you know, yep. not the no, not the same. Thing. But anyway, I don't want to bag on today's different. baseball, but so much, but <laughs> but it's different, well, man. It is because we just remember it so much. Um, and the pitchers is, today, fun. man. Yeah, the pitchers today. What do you think of all like the pitchers? Like they're taking them out so early, right? You know. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. It, it's changed. I mean, you look at guys back in the day like Fergie or Kenny Holzman. They they threw. Yeah. Look at the, the complete games um, that they throw now. If you have what five a year, you're yeah. you're you're unheard of. Oh, I don't. You know, I don't, yeah, I then, don't even get five, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, exactly. yeah, no. Back then, my God, these are some, you know, it was nothing to throw two, three hundred, three hundred innings. It was just crazy. They never complained. You know, no, it was um, no. It, it, you know, I'll tell you a, a quick a quick funny story. Is as my dad got older, I used to take him, or because he didn't drive so well, I would take him to those autograph shows that he would do. And, oh. and the fun about those is, you know, his signing is, say, from 1 to 3 in the afternoon. He'd get there at, at 11, 30, or 12 because you have all the mail-in items that people would send. And um, I would I'd drive him, so I'd sit in the back, and I'd have the opportunity to sit there and listen to him and, and all the other, a lot of the Hall of Famers. And the one day I remember it was my dad was there uh, and Whitey Ford was there. And they're sitting oh, there wow. talking. They're talking. And it was the day after Kerry Wood for the Cubs said he couldn't pitch because he has a blister on his finger. So he didn't pitch because he had a blister. So my dad, my dad's signing in the middle of signing stops and goes, Hey, Whitey, let me ask you something. He goes, would you ever miss a start because you have a blister on your finger? You know, and he kind of gives a little laugh and smirk and said, Lou, if I would have gone to the manager and said, Hey, I can't throw today. I have a blister on my finger. I barely would have got the word finger out of mouth before I'd have a bus ticket in my hand, heading back to wherever our minor league camp was. Yeah. You, know, you you didn't do that stuff, you know. Yeah, and, no, and, and, yeah. And even it, the pitching was, now, you, you know, Fergie and Ernie and uh, or not Ernie, Fergie and Kenny and all those guys that had built hands. When they went out to pitch, you were expected to go nine innings, not five, okay. and then we'll give it to somebody else. Well, that's just. I mean, and, and Kerry Kerry was a battler, so we know we we love him. But it's it's just. I think at that time they would look at a blister and say you're coming out. It's almost like yeah. it's not his choice. Right. Yeah. You know, well, he did. especially yeah, when he you did. have an arm like him, they're like, we don't want anything to go wrong. And that seems where it goes. The, the more that these guys are, are, are coming in and they're their bonus babies or they're getting this kind of money, they almost want to protect them so much that they're not letting them just go. Yeah. And, no. Yeah. Between pitch counts and gosh, he's at a hundred pitches. Let's get him out. You know, or, or, you know, like I said, you don't yeah. see the, the, the complete games anymore. So no, but you don't, but I, there's a lot. There is a lot more money invested in the people now than there was back then. Yeah, but that's the thing, though. It's like you, you, you got this money. You're paying this guy, you know, $13 million. It's like you can let him get through five. You can let yeah. him get through five. Come on. Yeah. I mean, it's like it just seems like when someone gets in <laughs> trouble, they're, they're like, oh, get the guy ready in the bullpen. And you almost feel like these guys aren't even fighting out of their own battles anymore. And you as a yep. pitcher, you know that's what you do, right? That's what you're, yep. you're preparing oh, for. Yeah, you know? I think sadly so, my, my dad and your dad were born a little bit too soon. Because if they were playing now, yeah, but at the same time, though, they were they were born just right. Because those times, you know, those eras, both your dads, and my my dads, they were great times, man. And they'll always yeah, be remembered but, in those times. So, oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, all we have now are the pictures, so we can see the pictures, which are which are great. Yeah, yeah, man. And your dad, you know, your dad, I read, was the first one to do the shift. 
off of Ted Williams. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. That and that that came about between of a uh, in between a double header because I think Williams was like four for four in the first game. So in between games, wow. and I wish I had this. He was trying to figure things out, and we, he had a napkin. He was trying to figure things out on a napkin. I wish I had that napkin. But yeah, <laughs> tried to shift. You know, That's so awesome, and he knew because he and Ted, you know, they got along fairly well. Rivals, obviously, but still got along well. You know, and he knew how Ted right. was. If Ted says, "All right, you're you're pulling everybody over to the right side," I'm still going to hit to the right side, and I'm still going <laughs> to beat you. You know, it was <laughs> it was that. So he knew how competitive awesome. he was. But yeah, right. that, but those well, they, those were those were great times. I mean, it's yeah, it's just man. neat to see all that old stuff. And and you know, I miss the old Wrigley. I miss going down and getting yelled at by Yosh. You know, those, those kind of things. Yeah, we used to watch the, watch the games out of the door there, me and Ronnie in the late innings. We just go oh, down, and that's where, you know, Billy be out in left field, and we got our head stuck out the out the door there. <laughs> yeah. The last, that's, you know, last inning. So, man, yeah, those were great times. Just, oh, they were. They stick in your head, man. They stick in your head, and it's just you, it's yep. part of our life, and uh, you cherish that for sure, man. It is. Absolutely. Um, it's funny. If you tell people that, they're like, no way. Like, yeah, that's right. how it was. That's what we did. Right, man. So, uh, yeah, great talking great. to Jimmy, man. Awesome. Um, how's yeah. everything for you now? Everything good? Hey, doing doing great. Family knock on wood is doing great. My daughter, uh, oldest daughter Jenna, had a baby, so I'm now a grandfather. So I, great. it's awesome. Life is life is good. Awesome. And man. I, you know, I've been I've been following you and the show and everything else, so I know things oh, are good cool. over there. Yeah, right absolutely. On, man. So right on. That's I, great, I would man. love really to appreciate it. Spend some time and have a coke. How's that? Lo- love to, love to, buddy. Coke, beer, whatever. I mean, come on. Um, I know. I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't sure, so I didn't politically correct. Wasn't sure Absolutely. for what? Wasn't Beers sure were what? great. Let's. You I know, love you never a know. Cold one. So All right, there um, we go. You know what? Next time we're going to Bernie's. There you go, man. There we go. When so, I get back to Chicago, it's been a while since I've been back there, but definitely, man, uh, I will let you know. If you're yeah, in Arizona, well, I make a trip out there from here. We'll get together. Thanks, Jimmy. That'd be great. I love talking. You love your Thank brother. you, Jeff. Take care, brother. Take care. All right, you too. Bye. All right. Talk to you Bye. soon, Mike. See you. That's our show. And please don't hesitate to write to us. We'd love to hear from you. Any comments, what you think about the show, write to us at jeff.ppcpodcast at gmail.com. And as many of you know, doing a podcast takes a lot of time, effort, and resources. If you enjoy listening and would like to support us and get exclusive content, hit subscribe. Or if you want to get early access, exclusive content, and other perks, head on over to our Patreon page by clicking the links below this episode or over to, on our website, peanutspopcornandcrackerjacks.com. And a special thanks to our cool Cracker Jacks, Scott Nelson, Jim McCauley, Debbie Foley, and Sherry Matarisi. We now can fill a pickleball court. Woohoo! Woohoo! Thank Keep you. Keep coming. We want more. And... Thanks for supporting us and listening. It means the world. It sure does. And Ken Griffey Jr. said, you lose, you smile, and you come back the next day. You win, you smile, and you come back the next day. Toodaloo. Santofilms.com, the place to buy this old cub DVDs, posters, and this old cub t-shirts. Get yourself one now at Santofilms.com.